Hey everybody, Mungo Dark Matter here and welcome to Dark Matters. Today on Dark Matters, I thought I'd discuss desktop uh, PC performance gaming machines versus laptop gaming machines. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Also, consider clicking on the bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos and live streams as they happen. Well, it's been a rough couple last days for me because uh, uh, up the East Coast came this windstorm that was pretty brutal, and in my area, it knocked out electricity for 600,000 people, and I was one of those 600,000 people. Lost power for about two days, and so I'm glad to have the power back, and I'm glad to have the power back so I can film this video. All right, so let's get back to our topic, which is uh, desktop performance gaming uh, machines versus uh, gaming laptops. Let's start with the laptops, I think, really, because that's where the key uh, is right here as far as performance. Gaming machines are machines that really tend to take up uh, the most or, or need the most performance from their users because they're doing things like rendering 3D worlds uh, on the fly. And that takes a lot of uh, power to do that uh, without you know getting lag and other problems with your uh, uh, frame rate and such. So... With laptops, uh, if we just talk about regular desktops and regular laptops, laptops are always at a disadvantage, and I will tell you why. The first reason laptops are at a disadvantage, as far as performance goes, is uh, they run off of batteries. I mean, you can plug a laptop in, but people buy laptops so they can run them off of batteries at least part of the time. And so one of the key features that uh, people are looking for in laptops are laptops that will have a reasonable uh, charge in them that can last for a few hours or so. So the more powerful the machine, the more power it draws out of those batteries and the faster the batteries wear down. So one key element in a laptop is being able to make it run longer on a battery. That means uh, it has to draw less power, which means uh, that it has, tends to have less performance because the more performance or the uh, faster the chip, the more uh, energy you're using and the faster your batteries go down. So that's one big thing. Another huge thing with laptops is the more power you have, the more heat you generate or the more heat the CPU generates. And when the CPU generates a lot of heat, uh, you have to get rid of that heat somehow, which is harder to do when you're using a laptop, particularly a laptop that is like a thin profile laptop. So laptops have difficulties getting rid of the heat. So the things that you want in a chip for a laptop, at least a CPU chip, are that it uses less heat uh, or it produces less heat and it uses less uh, energy. And both of those things are going to tend to draw your performance levels down because one way to get those levels down is to make the chip run less fast and also have uh, kind of slower modes for the chip to run in where it can kind of do some power saving. So those are the two big things as far as laptops that are holding laptops back. Now on the desktop side, as far as performance goes, uh, there are lots of ways to get rid of the heat just with air. There's plenty of space in the case. You can put more fans in the case. Uh, you can actually cool the CPU, or you can have it liquid cooled instead of um, air cooled. And uh, so that's an advantage. You can also overclock the chip. When you overclock the chip, it gets a lot hotter, but you can use liquid cooling, as I was mentioning, to cool down that chip so you can overclock it and get even more performance out of it. So those are, are big advantages of it. The power isn't an issue. The size in it isn't the issue. The, uh, the, uh, the way it can get rid of heat is not an issue. So those are the that's the big thing in just a desktop versus a laptop. And this is particularly true when you're talking about gaming machines. Now, so another big issue in gaming machines are gaming machines tend to use a lot of uh, a lot of the power needs to be used on graphics. So they have specialized graphics cards and really good graphics cards. In fact, the, some of the graphics cards are more powerful than the PC themselves, or, or at least they rival it. 
I remember back years ago when they filmed the first Jurassic Park, I actually visited the University of Maryland, uh, their graphics lab, where they did some of the special effects for that movies, and they were using these machines called silicon graphic indigo machines, and these things cost about a quarter of a million dollars. And I remember looking at the specs on them, it was a few years after this, after they were kind of obsolete, but the chips weren't that fast. The, the uh, CPUs weren't that fast. Even for the time, I thought, gee, that's not that impressive of a machine. But then when I looked at the graphic cards, the graphic cards had their own GPUs, which stands for Graphical Processing Unit, which is kind of the CPU equivalent for a graphics card. And they had a lot of memory to them. So the graphics cards were like the most impressive thing about those machines. Uh, the the actual central processing unit wasn't wasn't that impressive, frankly, at the time. Uh, and so now we have like really fast CPU, CPU chips, which are much faster than even that quarter of a million dollar Indigo. And we have have graphics cards that blow away that uh, Indigo uh, on just a regular gaming machine. And that machine, this was many years ago, probably like twenty or more years ago. Uh, the, that machine was a quarter million dollar machine. So we're, we're running machines now that are better than a quarter of a million dollar machine 20 years ago. So in order to have a really good uh, graphics card and, and uh, one with a good GPU on it, you also have to have, it has to be separate. Uh, some CPUs actually have graphics chips built in them as well to save money. But those are not really performance graphics chips, and they share the same memory that the CPU does. So they don't have their own dedicated memory. Gaming machines have cards that have dedicated memory and dedicated GPUs on them. And uh, so in order to have one of those, you need space, and so you need a case. And, and so the bigger the case, the better the machine. Now, on the flip side, gaming laptops do have their own GPUs and kind of separate cards. They've found a way to somehow fit that in a small case, but they're the mobile version. And when you have a mobile version of a CPU or a mobile version of a GPU, because they're trying to save a certain amount of power and because they don't, uh, or they're not able to get rid of as much heat as easily, uh, their special version that tends to be a little bit lower power. Now I was uh, reading up on this and apparently GPUs, the mobile version of the same GPU, can run about 25% or so slower than the desktop version. So right off, even though you might have the same uh, manufacturer card number or model number in a gaming laptop as you do in a desktop laptop, that laptop's version is going to be 25% slower or so. So that's, that's a, a big performance lag for uh, a gaming machine. So why would you want a gaming laptop over a desktop if a gaming desktop performs so much better? Well, I thought about this for a while. And uh, one reason is you may want to take your gaming wherever you want to go. In, in other words, you want, might want to go to a friend's house. You might want to go to a coffee shop and do gaming. Uh, you might want to go to wherever and do gaming. And so the gaming laptop allows you to do that. You can't really do that real easily with a desktop. Uh, so that's that's one big reason, but maybe that's not a big reason for a lot of people. I think what might be a major reason why people buy gaming laptops is they want one machine that they can carry around and do the stuff they have to do, and they need to, to do other things uh, like word processing. Uh, particularly if you're in college, you're doing papers, and you need a laptop, you need to take it around for research, papers, assignments, and stuff, but you still want to do gaming, you may go with a gaming machine because it's it's better performance than just a regular laptop, and it will allow you to do gaming. It might not allow you to do gaming at the level you'd be able to do with a desktop where you're overclocking in and you've got liquid cooling and everything, but it's still going to be a pretty good experience. And so I think that's why a lot of people get the gaming laptop. It's so they kind of have one machine. In other words, they could also just say, hey, you know what? I really want a desktop gaming machine. They could 
put their money in the desktop gaming machine and if they needed a laptop also they could buy a low-end laptop but if they're doing a lot of work on that laptop and they need a little more performance out of it a lower end laptop might not work for them so by putting all of their uh, eggs into one basket and going with a gaming machine they get a machine that can do gaming and it can do the stuff they want and it's portable so i think that's why a lot of people are buying gaming machines but if you really want to go for the full performance and overclocking and, and trying to get the most out of the machine the desktop gaming machine is probably the way to go for gaming for you. I'm Unger, Dark Matter, and this has been Dark Matters, and whatever you do, enjoy technology, and I will see you next time.